Good morning, everyone. It's Christoph Chu from Beverly Hills, California. And thank you so much for tuning in today for my live luxury market video. I always appreciate you watching and listening and learning about what's going on in our local Los Angeles, Beverly Hills, Bel Air, Hollywood Hills real estate market. Uh, we have a very unique and special market here in Los Angeles. And uh, having done this now for 29 years, I've been a guide for many buyers and many sellers over the years and help guide them and navigate them through um, the ups and downs and the mountain tops and the valleys of buying and selling luxury real estate. And uh, so those of you that are checking in, I'd love to know where you're checking in from. Give me a hello, give me a like. I'd love to say hello and chat with you. Hey, Michael Crawford, how are you? Always appreciate you watching. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what's been going on so far this year for the first quarter of 2018. Hard to believe it's 2018. And what is going on in our luxury marketplace for real estate here in Los Angeles? And my market summary is basically the west side of Los Angeles, which essentially covers from downtown LA to Malibu to Encino down to the LA airport. And LA is a pretty vast uh, city, meaning it's very vast geographically. Also, we do have 14 million uh, residents plus in Los Angeles, so it's a big town. Uh, big, big county, big town, big county, big prices. So in our marketplace, which is very, very different than the average in America, in America, as you know, the average price I think today is about 500000 across the board in the United States. However, in Beverly Hills, Beverly Hills proper, it's about $9 million. And for us in the west side of LA, we consider luxury essentially starting at $5 million. So my monthly uh, luxury market reports are pertaining sp specifically to what's going on in the luxury market over five million in Los Angeles. Hi, Ahmed, Jim Gillespie. Hey, how are you? Boy, am I honored to have the uh, President Emeritus, Emeritus, Emeritus? <laughs> of Coldwell Banker watching my live real estate video. I love you, Jim. Say hi to Jenny for me. And of course, say hi to uh, Nellie Fox and all the different uh, lovely cats you have. And Jim, I love watching your videos. Uh, they're great, and I love the amazing view from your beautiful penthouse in the sky. So congratulations on that. So anyways, let's talk a little bit about the market. So first of all, let's recap kind of the end of last year, or the last actually eight years, because I have that right in front of me here. Back in 2008, over 10 million, I'm going to start with kind of the $10 million plus numbers. Back in 2008, there were 47 sales over 10 million in Los Angeles. Uh, then 2009, we dropped because that was kind of a downtime in our marketplace. And price, we had 39 sales in 2009. Then the market kept continuing to gain speed. In 2010, there were 68 sales, which was double the year prior. 2011, there were 56. So it was a slight drop from the year before. Then that's where things started to go gangbusters. 2012, there were 92 sales, over 10 million, which was double the year prior. 95 in 2013. So those were essentially... Um, uh, the, the, you know, about the same as the year prior. Then in 2014, 131 sales over 10 million. 2015, 140. 2016, 160. And last year in 2017, we had 185. And Lou, I will talk about that at the end of my uh, talk. So when I'm done with the stats, why don't you maybe comment again so I don't forget your question about if the market is in a bubble, because I do have an answer to that. So the market is actually up in nine years, actually eight years, 393% in terms of the increase in sales of homes over 10 million. I remember back, I think it was 2007, I sold the first home for 22 million in Homeby Hills, uh, which was the most expensive home at that time. So that's 10 years ago. Today, homes in Homeby Hills similar to that are going for 45 to 75 million. So we've doubled to tripled in value in the key top, top spots. And I've always said location, location, location. Buy the best possible location you can afford. That's always the best bet. You can buy a small house, a tear down, and a great location, and you will always uh, do well financially in the long run with that kind of property. So that's kind of the last 10 years, but what's going on so far in 2018? So we're down a little bit, and my comparisons are basically period to period, meaning what I'm talking about, what's happening so far in 2018 is for the same period in 2017. So meaning the first quarter. So it's year to year, first quarter to first quarter is what I'll be talking about specifically today. So, so far this year, over 10 million, there have been 41 closed sales in Los Angeles. 
um, and it's about 51, there were 51 last year. So we're down about 23% in terms of the number of sales over 10 million from last year to this year. Now it's interesting, January was a very slow month, much to our surprise. Then February was a very, very hot month, lots of closings. Then March was a little bit slow again. And now in April, we've had more closings over 10 million than we did in all of March so far. And we have, I believe, a 22 homes currently pending over $10 million. Now quite often tax time, April comes and people are a little bit hesitant. The new tax law changes. I think people weren't quite sure of what was going on in January and February. I know those of us that pay our taxes, we had to get everything ready in you know, January and February for our April personal returns and now for our May returns. But now I think people understand what's going on with the um, uh, tax laws and I think people are back to buying again. So, so let's go to the marketplace and we're gonna start with the 5 million plus and go to 40 million plus. So this is again a comparison of the first quarter of 2018, right now what's going on versus what happened this time last year in 2017. So uh, for $5 million plus sales in Los Angeles and the West Side, we've had 146 closed sales so far this year in 2018 versus 151 in 2017. So small insignificant decrease in number of sales, down about 4%. Uh, in the 10 million plus category, we've had 41 closed sales so far in 2018 versus 51 in 2017. So we're down about 20% or so in terms of the number of sales so far this first quarter in the $10 million plus range. However, as I'd mentioned, currently right at the moment, there are 22 homes in escrow in our marketplace over 10 million, which is much stronger than what it was a month ago. So uh, the numbers are not all in yet, but that's kind of the basis. Been kind of a little bit up and down, a little bit up and down. So pertaining to your question earlier, we don't see it currently as a bubble. There's a slight adjustment in the marketplace, and we'll talk about foreign investors. That's dropped down a little bit this year. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that because the Chinese were buying quite a bit, but there have been some major restrictions put on money coming out of China, although I still have a lot of very wealthy Chinese buyers that are buying, but those are people that typically already have their funds in Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, the UK, or already in the US. But those that want to buy, that have their money in China, they're having some issues and difficulties in getting the funds out of the country. So we'll <coughs> talk about that a bit further when we discuss specifically who's buying these luxury properties. So $20 million plus category, there have been 15 sales so far in LA this year closed versus 19 in 2017. So we're down about 21% so far in terms of the number of sales actually occurring. And we have currently 10 properties in escrow pending over 20 million. Uh, so that's a good number. And 30 million plus, again, about the same. We have seven closings so far in 2018 over 30 million. Uh, versus 9 in 2017 at this time, so we're down about 22%. Now, um, in terms of the $40 million plus range, there have been two closings so far in 2018 versus three in 2017, so only one less than the, the same time last year at this time. There have been some pretty big sales so far this year. Um, there was a sale for a little bit over 100 million in Malibu, and uh, but that was 85 million for the house and 35 million for the furniture. Yes, 30 and, and art, of course. So, 85 million dollar sale, 35 million dollar for the furniture. And right now, there are two properties currently pending over 75 million. There's a beautiful house in Homeby Hills, uh, the home of Brad Gray, and that's listed for 77.5 million, a little bit over two acres on Carrollwood Drive in Homeby Hills. And Homeby Hills is still considered the premier number one luxury marketplace in Los Angeles. Last year, the Playboy Mansion sold for 105 million. The Spelling Manor is on the market right now. It's, it's Petra Stone's house now for uh, 200 million. So we have a lot of very big properties on the market. And there's one in escrow, Peter Morton's Malibu compound uh, is listed at 110 million and is also currently in escrow. So uh, we have some big, big sales. And also there was uh, the one I talked about the, for 85 million in Malibu that was on Pacific Coast Highway. So another question is, where are these buyers coming from over 20 million and what areas? So uh, the $20 million sales out of, out of 51 sales so far, who is buying these homes? This year so far, surprisingly, 73% of the buyers were American. Um, last year, I believe if I remember correctly, it was around 68%. Uh, last year, we ended up the year where 
of the foreign investors, I believe 40% were Chinese buyers. We have no big Chinese buyers that have purchased so far this year over 20 million. So, But it's still young. We're only the third month into the year. So I'm sure we will see more of that. I'm working with three different very large uh, Chinese buyers are looking to buy over 20 million. So hopefully we'll increase that statistic uh, sometime in the next few months. So 73% of the buyers were American out of the 15 sales. I'm sorry, there were 15 sales over 20 million, not 51. Sorry, made a mistake on that. So 11 of those were American. One was Canadian. We consistently have one or two Canadians every year buying over 20 million. There was one buyer that bought uh, from Japan. Uh, we haven't seen a big buyer buy from Japan in a while. And he purchased a house in Bel Air off market for 85 million. A beautiful modern house uh, purchased by a Japanese businessman for 85 million in Bel Air on Bellagio Road. And that was the largest sale so far this year in Bel Air. Whereas last year, the largest sale was Jay Z and Beyonce's house that was purchased for 88 million. And according to what I've read, they've spent a few million dollars on the most major security systems ever known to man. So, interesting little side fact. So 85 million, the highest price so far in Bel Air this year. We had one big buyer from Mexico this year, over 20 million, so that's nice. There's always a lot of money coming in from Mexico. Uh, this year it came in from Mexico City. A lot of, um, I have had a lot of clients over the years that have main residences in Mexico City, maybe vacation homes in Cuernavaca, which is a couple hours outside of Mexico City, and they have houses in Beverly Hills and Bel Air. So we always see uh, the wealthy uh, Mexican nationals that like to own properties here in Beverly Hills and Los Angeles. Hey, Litsa, how are you? How are things in Greece? Miss seeing you. We had such fun with you this summer in, uh, in uh, Mykonos. That was great. And Suhan, how are you? Congratulations on your big awards uh, last week in Antalya, Turkey. I'm so sorry I wasn't able to join you. We had to cancel my, my speaking you know, at the last minute, but hopefully I'll be there for your next Gen Blue Turkey. I can't wait to come and visit the amazing country of Turkey and the cradle of civilization. Uh, we had one buyer so far this year from Monaco. Uh, we have not seen a buyer from Monaco in a while, and I love Monaco. It's uh, uh, Monte Carlo and Monaco are one of my favorite places in the world. And he purchased the Lenny Kravitz house. Uh, Lenny Kravitz built and designed a home in the Hollywood Hills, eastern side of the Hollywood Hills, not, actually not quite east, the eastern side or section of the Sunset Strip. It came on at, uh, I think, 36.5 million, sold within a week for 33.5 million, and that was to a buyer from Monaco. So, kind of interesting what's going on. So again, this year, just kind of as a recap, we're down, you know, roughly about 20% in terms of the number of sales in some of our high-end markets. Five million plus is, is the strongest of, the five to 10 million is the strongest market, and under five million, we're still seeing lots of multiple offers. Um, I would say most of my properties under $3 million, if they're priced well, are still getting multiple offers. And just like any market, buyers are always price conscious. So it's a really important thing to always price your property at market value or even a little bit below market value. Because if you do, you will get multiple offers and you will always sell for what the market will bear. You can never underprice a property and sell it for too low. That I can assure you. If you put it in the market, you do the right marketing strategy like I do, and you put it on expose it, you will be able to get the best top dollar. And we did sell a couple of properties in the last few weeks where we closed over asking price or we sold within one to 2% of the listed price. And uh, also the great thing of the last three closings, we did not renegotiate $1 after inspections. Why is that? Interesting question. Uh, one of the reasons is uh, one of them we did uh, pre-inspections, we had, um, House since we had the property inspection, we had a sewer inspection, we had a termite inspection, and we had a retrofitting inspection. So, uh, so we had all the inspections up front provided to the buyers. So once they did their inspections, there was nothing new, no new surprises. So they closed Esther without renegotiations. So um, everyone check in, please say hello. I'd love to know where you guys are from. I kind of went through my little topics of uh, what's going on in the marketplace. So I'd love you to. Um, tell me where you're checking in from. Give me some likes and some hellos if you enjoy these videos. Um, I try to do them once a month. Hey, Louis, how are you? I miss you. Miss our friend Ayumi. We need to get her back to LA. Um, and so, uh, anyways, just give me some hearts and likes. My friend Bruce Bryant. Love you. Can't wait for the new magazine to come out. San Diego's in the house. I love that. We have Oregon. We have uh, Greece was in the house. We have Atlanta. This is cool, I love it. I love people watching from all over the world. So, 
let's take the next few minutes. My update took shorter, was a little bit shorter than I expected. And why don't you guys ask me some questions about the marketplace? Uh, someone earlier asked if we're in a bubble. We don't see this as a bubble. And having been in real estate now for almost 30 years, hard to believe, um, we don't see the signs today of previous bubble markets. And I started in 1989. And uh, 89, 90, 91 was a pretty strong market. It was increasing, and then I, but I was brand new, so I didn't do a lot of business at that time. I didn't really know how to get clients. And then starting in 91, the market crashed through kind of the mid 90s, mid late 90s, where prices went down almost 40, 50%, depending on the neighborhood. And then again, I went through the crash in the late 2000s when the SNL crisis occurred. And, uh, but I survived both. And uh, again, I don't see, or we don't see in, in our top experts, and we have meetings, I'm not just talking off the cuff, I study the market every day. I look at what's sold, I look at what comes in the market, how long it takes to sell. I look at who's buying, why they're buying. Uh, there's still always a strong marketplace in Los Angeles. A lot of our market in the high end are vacation buyers, uh, second, third, fourth, fifth home buyers. And yes, people do buy homes for 80, 100 million, 50 million to have as vacation homes. Yeah, I know it sounds kind of crazy. Um, yes, uh, Aleem, the Playboy Mansion. So the Playboy Mansion sold last year. It was listed for 150 million, and that sold for 105 million to uh, one of the heirs of the Hostess Fortune. And that's uh, on a street called Charing Cross Road in Holmby Hills, which is the premier location in Holmby Hills. And that was the highest sale so far in Holmby Hills. 105 million, whereas the year before there was a sale for 100 million. And the Playboy Mansion was on, I believe, four acres, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, older home, it's, it sold back in 1970 for $1 million. So since 1970 to 2017, that home increased over 105 times in value, from a million to 105 million. So that tells you about the marketplace in Los Angeles. That's pretty unbelievably amazing. And I sold uh, a property across the street from the Playboy Mansion last year. And uh, we sold that it was a teardown that was purchased for $18.9 million. It was a 1.6 acre lot. They also bought the lot next door for $17.8 million. Tore them both down. for So they bought the two lots for about $36 million. A uh, total of about just under three acres. And the new owner, who is from uh, Asia, is by building a 36,000 square foot home. Another one I sold on Mapleton Drive a couple years ago, my clients are building a 36,000 square foot home. So it's not uncommon in Los Angeles where I talked about before, many homes are torn down and built as new and um, they'll pay a lot of money for the dirt. So it's, you know, again, location, location, location. Uh, any appreciation for raw land in Malibu? Uh, yes, Lou, land in Ma Malibu has been one of our hottest markets in 2017 and going into 2018. Uh, when the market was very strong in Beverly Hills a couple years ago, Malibu was a bit slow that year. So you never know, but Malibu has really been uh, picking up a lot uh, in you know the last few years. Julie, raw land, you're looking for buying raw land, I get that. Malibu does have some raw land, but LA overall, there's not a lot of just raw land. You have to basically buy an old house that's a tear down, tear it down and go through the planning and building process. So again, in answer to the question before, we don't see it as a bubble. Uh, we do see the market making some slight adjustments. You know, top hot markets can't go on forever, meaning properties can't continue to appreciate up and up and up and up over and over and over uh, forever. So the market, we had some years, I think three years ago, where the market went up 23 to 27% in 12 months. So, you know, markets cannot sustain that kind of growth in perpetuity. So, uh, so we don't see it as a bubble. We see it just as a slight correction, but people are still strong in the market and uh, it's good. Uh, inventory in the Platinum Triangle. CNBC reported today that inventory is low overall. Absolutely, uh, the inventory is low and um, it has not been uh, what we'd like it to be. So there's a lot of buyers out there and there's just not a lot of homes for them to buy. And one interesting aside, I forgot to get that statistic for you, but as of a month ago, 60% of the homes over 20 million so far this year have sold off market. That's why as your guide in real estate, it's truly important if you're looking to buy or even looking to sell, you align yourself with a top agent like me that knows the ins and outs and knows about all of the um, private pocket listings that are not on the market. So just wanted to share that. Bruce Bryant, uh, we'll be featuring 
I'll be featured in the new upcoming issue of Home and Realty Magazine. Cool. I love that, Bruce. Hello to Home and Realty Magazine. Great magazine. I love having my properties in your magazine, and I have friends from all around the world that are now advertising in your magazine as well. Hello, Suli. How are you? So, guys, uh, give me some more likes and hearts. I'd love that. If you have any more questions, um, I'm going to open up for a couple more minutes for more questions. Then I have to get back to work. Uh, CNBC says the median home price rose about 8.9%. Uh, I would say that's probably right on track. I don't have the numbers of the actual percentage of increase. Although I did read the other day, uh, every market is different here in LA and we have so many micro markets. And for example, I personally work in 15 different MLS zones. And you know, for example, Beverly Hills itself, the city of Beverly Hills has maybe 10, 12 different markets. Beverly Hills Post Office has 10, 12 different micro markets. And every market is so different. Uh, even though we do have some gated communities, they're not like other areas where every home is the same, the same builder. Every home here in LA is pretty much custom, so there's very little um, uh, way to really determine the exact pricing and all that. Uh, Aleem Young, you want to buy the Playboy Mansion? Well, I'm sorry to tell you, it's sold, um, and I doubt seriously that guy is going to ever sell that property. He wanted that very badly. He paid a great price for it, so I don't think that's going to be available again. Hey Francis, Montclair, New Jersey, the highest sale was $3,875,000, interesting. But Francis, I'm pretty sure that there are uh, much higher priced homes in New Jersey as well, because I, I know people who live in New Jersey, and I remember seeing homes for $10,000,000, 15000000 Now maybe they haven't sold so far, but I'm curious Francis, even at the peak of your hottest market, what is the highest sale price of all time in New Jersey? Um, again, in LA right now, the highest sale price thus far is $105,000,000. We do have a home that my company has listed for $350 million. Aloha, Kauai. I love Hawaii. <laughs> we have a house, uh, Bruce McKelsey has a house in Bel Air that was $250 million. He did a major price chop this week. He dropped the price to $188 million. So, uh, and there's another house under construction for $250 million. So we do have houses that are in that price range. Uh, my highest price listing currently is 51.8 million and that's here in the city of Beverly Hills in the uh, top walkable location in this, or I shouldn't say walkable, uh, the top location close to businesses and restaurants called the Flats of Beverly Hills. And uh, the Flats of Beverly Hills is literally uh, starts a not even a block, a half a block from Rodeo Drive and all the business districts, the restaurants, Rodeo Drive, the stores. So people love the Flats. It's called the Flats because it's the Flatlands. You can um, just walk down or you know, take a quick drive down to all, you know, all the restaurants and shopping. So it's a very, very popular area in my property called Maison 808. Uh, you may have seen it on Extra, Mansions and Millionaires. This weekend we were on NBC Open House. That's a 1.68 acre, 1 acre property. They bought two properties, combined the lots, and built a new home in two, 1990. The house is over 26,700 square feet. Has two guest houses, tennis court, Olympic sized pool, championship croquet lawn, and it has two mini trains. That's one of the coolest things about the house. Two mini trains. So that's part of the fun and lifestyle of um, Beverly Hills and Los Angeles. Uh, Elon lives in, uh, Jackie Elon lives in Bel Air, but not behind the gates. He lives behind the faux gates of Bel Air. You're correct. And for those of you that don't know, Bel Air is. Uh, probably our second to third top market in Los Angeles. We call the top markets the Platinum Triangle, which is Beverly Hills, Bel Air, and Holmby Hills. And I don't know who coined the phrase Platinum Triangle, but that's what it's called. So I would say Holmby Hills is number one, Beverly Hills and Bel Air are number two. Um, and But most of Bel Air, the prime area, is behind what are called faux gates. There's an east gate and there's a west gate. They're quite beautiful. Uh, but you drive through it, but it's not an actual gate that opens and closes with the guard. Uh, but Bel Air has full-time Bel Air Patrol, the patrols the neighborhood. And if you do want a gated community in Bel Air, we have several of them. We have Bel Air Place, which is off of Moraga Drive. And there's a house there currently that's listed for $36 million, um, in the gated community of Bel Air Place. It's a beautiful house uh, owned by the U.S. Ambassador to Denmark. And uh, there's another gated community called Bel Air Crest. Uh, which is just north of Bel Air Place. That's also a true gated community. Uh, we just sold a house in there. House is there. We just sold the lowest price in there for a million eight seventy five. And last year, the highest price in that community was seventeen point five million. That was the house that um, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West 
purchased, I think, for 10. They remodeled, never lived in it, and they sold it for 17.5 to uh, a Russian heiress. And uh, there's another small gated community up in the northern part of Bel Air off of Mulholland Drive. Uh, so there's basically three gated communities in the Bel Air area. Ahmed, good question. What's pricier, Beverly Hills or Manhattan? I believe Manhattan still is the priciest uh, in, in Los Angeles. Although we were in New York last week and there was a home that sold for, I don't know the square footage, the, uh, not the, um, oh shoot, I forget the name of the previous owner, but it sold for 42 million and uh, the owners who bought it spent about 40 million renovating it. So I do believe New York is the highest, the high, highest price in the world from what I understand are still um, Hong Kong, uh, Moscow, London, New York, and Tokyo. Uh, LA still, from what I know, is, is one of the best values in uh, the world for luxury properties. We very rarely, I mean, the kind of the top end of the market in Los Angeles is maybe 3,000 to maybe 4,000 a square foot for a home. Um, so that's kind of the top end. But I would say Manhattan is definitely a pricier marketplace than in uh, Beverly Hills. So uh, if you like this video, once again, give me some hearts and likes. I always appreciate your comments. Uh, just check in one more time. Let me know where you're from if you're just joining our live video. And uh, if you have any thoughts for other live videos you'd like to know about, you know, market conditions. Uh, I'm trying to do more and more live videos about the ins and outs of real estate. So I'm happy to share my 29 years of experience to be your guide if you're looking to sell or looking to buy. I'm always just a phone call away. You can call me at 310-777-6342 or friend request me on Facebook. Although Facebook, I'm full, so you can friend request me and we'll send you the link to our Facebook business page or follow me on Instagram. You can follow me there. I have a couple of business and personal on Instagram. Uh, and follow my YouTube channel. Uh, if you follow my YouTube channel and you subscribe to it, you'll be auto-notified whenever we post a video. And we post maybe one to two videos a day, so we're consistently putting out more content about the marketplace in, um, in Los Angeles and what's going on. So, so thanks again for watching. Thanks, Jakey, for following me on Twitter. I appreciate that. Hi, Anchana. How are you? I love the flowers. You know I love flowers and pets and beauty and life and being kind and good and uh, doing the right thing in real estate and helping people navigate through what can be challenging. It, look, buying and selling a home is a stressful thing, even for me as an agent. But I'm here to walk you through it, guide you through it. I have lots of experience. I'm a pretty calm-minded calm, calm -minded person, so I can uh, certainly help you. Aleem, if you do want to buy a property here in Los Angeles, uh, send me a private message. We'll correspond. I'll call you, and we'd, be, we'd love to help you. So again, thanks everyone for watching. I always appreciate your support. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you like it, give me likes and hearts and love. I always appreciate that. Post more questions. I'll answer them later on when I get to it. And please share this with your friends. Anybody who wants to know about real estate or if you're just an agent or no agents that want to learn how to do market updates, share my video and maybe they'll get some pointers and tips from me as to how to talk about what's going on in your local marketplace. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm glad you thought it was informative, Ahmed. I appreciate that. Have a great day. And it was raining this morning, but now it's clear skies and clear blue skies and sunshine. And I'm off to a luncheon meeting. There's a new proposed development in the Beverly Hills Post Office area, which sounds quite interesting. Um, it's, it's unusual because the Beverly Hills Post Office is a residential community. But there's a developer and an architect that I know that are looking to build 99 luxury hotel suites and some custom homes in, I think it's a pretty large parcel in Beverly Hills Post Office. So they've asked me to come up, take a look at the project, um, see what they're doing. So I'm excited to hear about this project because to have a 99 room hotel and luxury homes behind gates, right in the middle of Beverly Hills in the hills with probably exceptional views, that's gonna be a very interesting property. So again, and my job is to know what's coming on in the marketplace. So I'm gonna go there shortly, check out what's new and I'll keep you guys informed. See you soon and thanks for watching.